All right, we had a quick uh, eight-minute turnaround between the last match and uh, the previous match and this match, but uh, we're back here for our final match of the night for week five, our final Monday night feature matches uh, of the year 2023. And uh, we got what's looking to be a good one here. We got uh, one of our resident league heavyweights here, uh, two-time winner Jordan M, or JM Tron. Uh, on one side, he's facing off against Jack H, which we'll talk about in a moment. And what's in his hand here after the mulligan? Sweet mother of God. It's a uh, Promising Veins, a Plains, a Mountain, a uh, Dawn Runner, the Keeper of Fables, Polani's Hatcher. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That's two of a kind. That's two Polani's Hatchers in the end. <laughs> and a Keeper of Fables? Is that a cat I see? Oh, that is indeed a cat after yeah. them all. And we got it. A- we got cats everywhere here. Um, we got an Iron Paw Osprey here. We got a Shipwreck Sentry in hand. Oltec Cloud Guard. Uh, Vanguard of the Rose, which is the the three one that can sack stuff, and uh, some planes and a uh, planes and an island. Um, yeah, so Jack is actually uh, he's on his uh, elimination match here. He's at ten ten, so he needs to win to stay alive, and he definitely wants the win here. He wants uh, this is a rematch from our Ixalan remastered uh, finals. Of the mega draft, uh, where Jordan defeated Jack in his first, uh, it was Jack's first top eight. He made it to the final. He was the feature drafter. He made it all the way, and then Jordan got him. So he's uh, he wants revenge and he wants to stay alive. So uh, Jordan, on the other hand, he's uh, having uh, an incredible league. Uh, you know, not 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 surprising to anyone. Seventeen and five right now, so doing amazing. And he's picked up a nice trick here, which. Uh, Jack will definitely not be able to play around because it has Convoke. It's the aerial boost from uh, from Archer Machine. Plus two, plus two, flying. Uh, and it has it has Convoke. Yeah, I think Jack's kind of fine with that, to be honest. Like, he's really just trying to live. So he does have the mana he needs to get the five. Yeah. We know he has the Sentinel on top of the library. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, honestly, he my Hatcher family... Oh, <laughs> I thought he was going to type that to Jordan. <laughs> uh, no, I think it was in the, uh, yeah. Well, he typed it to you, basically. Or anybody watching his stream. <laughs> yeah, so he's not going to fall for that. He'll just play the Sentinel here. Did and, uh, did he not openly suggest that I that I not watch his stream? Or, or no, well, I think he said, don't watch my stream unless you like to see Polani's Hatchers. And I guess he's, <laughs> he's, making, he's making true on his threat here. Um... So off the top for Jordan here is a, a nice little rare here. Not a bomb by any measure, but the Kutzil's Flanker. The 3 mana 3 one flash that can... It's, it's kind of like a little, a little utility knife, you know? It can... Whatever, whatever you need it to do at that exact moment, uh, it'll probably do it for you. Deciding on his attacks here. Um, I mean, he can attack with the Vanguard and the Cloud Guard, I suppose. I mean... Jack could just block the the vanguard with the sentinel. Yeah. Hatcher coming down, that's going to make a 5-3 and a 3-3 blocker. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, look, if anybody can, can find a way to fight against multiple Polanyi's Hatchers with seemingly not the tools in hand at this time, Jordan Jordan can find a way. If, 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 if there's anybody that can, he'll pick up what he needs and he'll craft a series of turns that will allow him to to work around it, but uh, for <laughs> until then, uh, hope hope you like dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, and the fact that Plies Hatcher isn't legendary means that Jack can probably hold off a turn if he wants to, like, just make sure he's good. But he says, "No, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get in." <laughs> so he left that mana here. He left that mana for the flanker because he he didn't play a shipwreck sentry. So I think he's just firing off flanker no matter what here. I guess just to scry to. But yeah, uh, Atla Polani, which was from a commander deck, which I actually have as one of my commanders. Uh, I have a commander deck for Atla Polani, which is you know what this card's named after is a legendary creature. But whatever, whatever she hatches, uh, she just hatches indiscriminately uh, as many dinosaurs as, as she can find. And so here's a chump block. Did not want to take six extra damage there. Here comes the flanker. He's gonna assume we scry. I mean that's that. That's usually what. That's usually how how the card works. 
it's rare that making it a 4-2 or a 5-3 is really going to be uh, going to be correct. In this case, it would be a 4-2. I feel like the only time you like really ever use the first mode is for lethal. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess as a surprise end step thing. Oh, I got two counters. Okay. Yeah. Now I can attack you. Um, the, the Exile Tiger Player's Graveyard could definitely come up in this, in this format. I don't think with the colors that Jack's playing, it's going to really play out. You know, in the last game, that would have been, you know, if one of the players had a Kutzil's Flanker at their, uh, at their beck and call, that would have been, uh, quite something. Yeah. Could you imagine? In, res- for the and in response to a bringer trigger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> If <laughs> oh, sure. this is good value for Jordan. Oh yeah. So he's looking at a waylaying pirates or a Yoshian frontliner. If you remember that one from uh, Brothers War. Yeah. It's a little one one. I think it pumps another creature when it attacks, and you can unearth it for one. Now, well, this is going to be interesting because we know a second hatcher is coming down, and. <laughs> Yeah, but Jordan's doing what Jordan does, which is uh, finding the aggressive lines here. Which I really like this. He still has area boost in hand also, right? So yeah, area boost can sneak in uh, five damage uh, out of nowhere here with with one of these three ones. Like, yeah. like he could potentially cast it like sorcery speed, right? Just for the, for the plus two, I mean, plus two flying. Honestly... It's almost looking like Jack is very close to dead. <laughs> I mean, he is just dead if he doesn't produce two flying blockers, or at least one. Well, so I'm sorry. Uh, Jack has the poison dart frog to block one. Okay, flying, that's reach. But, but the Yoshian frontliner is it only like what does it give the plus one to? It gives what? another another another. Uh, creature you control or attacking creature. Any creature. Any creature? Uh, other than itself, I believe. So then I, w- I would assume Jordan has it then because he can just swing uh, aerial boost the guard? No, that doesn't work. Aerial boost the 3-1. Give the 1-1 to the 3-2 flyer and that would be lethal. They'll both be lethal, yeah. yeah. Like I said, Jordan finds a way. He says, I need to get aggressive. I can't, I can't focus. I can't freak out and just use all my resources to try and fight against this hatcher, I need to attack him, and I need to get him dead, and I need to hold this aerial boost for lethal, which uh, he's thinking about doing here. So, of note, because all the white creatures are tapped, uh, Jordan will not have priority with the aerial boost. Uh, If he did have a white creature untapped, it would give him priority, which... Jack might be able to use as a as a read, at least for a Convoke Spell. There's only so many Convoke Spells that you can cast with this amount of creatures untapped. But uh, because all of his white creatures are tapped, he does not have the priority. Yeah, I think Jack's going to take a different line here, knowing that he can't uh, just play a Hatcher. Okay, so he's playing the Dart Frog. I believe this will still be lethal, though. Yeah, because... I mean, Jordan's gonna sniff it out. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't miss much. Let's let, let's just say. So now Jack knows that he has to put pressure, but at the same time, though, it's a little difficult. Yeah. When you've sustained so much damage early on. So I don't think there could be really anything here for one mana. Uh, Jordan can just go ahead. Uh, so. It looks like he's just going to attacks. Oh, he, 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 he I, I think he's going to do it. Yeah, he can do it. He's, he has to do it now, yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right, well. He found... If I was a straight hands player, I can say I'm behind it. I, I, still, like it. I still don't know what that means, but <laughs> yeah. look, well done for Jor- by Jordan. Like I said, he finds his way. He's... He knows what to attack with. He knows what to do. He's an expert at this. So he's got a white, a nice white blue deck here that's carried him, uh, helped carry him far. Some rares I see immediately are the Unstable Glyph Bridge, the Roaming Throne, Tishana's Tidebinder, the Flanker, Malcolm, the Zoetic Glyph, which plays like a rare. It really does, to be honest. And, a, and he's splashing our, our, our good friend uh, Capri Sun, as I call it. I, I think the world's behind Capri Sun now. It's very catchy. 
It's one of my one of my nicknames that caught on. Most of them don't, but that one might have. It looks like Jack is for the most part just base green white splashing the red. Makes sense. Um, for I want to say this card's double sided integrity. I mean, regardless, uh, it's a it's a split card. It's yeah, regardless, it's split, so you can cast for the white regardless. Yeah, so for for a white or red hybrid one mana, it's a plus two plus two. But what you really want is the the other side. It's two a red and a white for a lightning helix. Okay, I'm like three damage to anything, gain three life for four mana. Yeah, he also has an unstable glyph. Also, Granted, okay. in these colors, you don't you don't get access to uh, cool things like zoetic glyph. Yeah, and he doesn't get to dig for it like Jordan does with his. Uh, I believe he has multiple copies of the the crewmate. Right now, it's uh, it's he has the too crewmate. many two drops for me to see how many crewmates he has. Uh, he well, would have to scroll down. Get the glyph there, right? They 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 can find it. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Oh, the glyph bridge. The glyph bridge. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, yeah the cliff bridge. Well, I'm saying, I I'm saying, okay. So he does he does have two staunch crewmate as he's scrolling down. He also has two abrade that he's splashing for. Um, so he's uh, he he's doing well as as we know. Um, you know, like we're saying, he finds the line. He like Jordan's one of those players. Whenever I get paired up against him on the bot, I'm like, I need to play absolutely perfect this game because <laughs> he's not making a mistake. <laughs> What that meme when you gotta sit up when you're playing the game? It's getting serious. Yeah, it's like I need to play absolute perfect. Any one small mistake I make could, is could could be just enough for him to to take the advantage away. So it looks like he's siding in a couple more red sources. I'm thinking about calamitous cave in here. Oh. Uh, maybe as a way to handle the hatcher and all all the all the things it brings with it. Honestly, it's a clean answer. You can get it to three. That's, that's pretty clean. Yeah. Not to mention your crewmate's digging for more value anyway, so you can. Yeah. So yeah, he's another another he's another player. He's gonna sideboard like a lot of the times. I just play my game and I'm like, eh, let's go <laughs> to the next game. I'm good. You know, unless there's something obvious like oh, I'll bring in like a flying hate card or an artifact hate card or something. But I, I I always have trouble finding the the exact right card that's gonna work against that matchup. I just I just don't usually put enough thought into it to figure yeah. to figure out. Um, I have to have it pre thought out. I know in uh, the last league that I played in the WoW league where I had a bunch of March of Machine cards, there was some cards I was often siding in and out, but it was like it was almost always the same cards, like depending on the matchup. It was like. Okay, if I'm playing like a deck that's trying to go along as well, I side out these two and bring in these two, and it was just kind of that was it. Um, anyway, what's uh, what's Jack's hand looking like here? We see Jordan's hand uh, is pretty reasonable. Ah, uh, we got a captivating cave. The uh, that's a kitty aspirant, right? The iron pearl aspirant. It's a kitty. Uh, it's, of course, it's a cat. Yes. All right, cat. It's a kitty. He's got a uh, the streetwise negotiator, Ooh, a that's... gnome, and a spring leaf. Saw blades. This... Funnily enough, the uh, negotiator makes the aspirant a three attacker, which yeah. is pretty good. That's not just a cat; that's a cat in a suit. Oh, the cat means business, if yeah. you will. Um, yeah. So for Jordan, he's got uh, Vanguard of the Rose, which he's playing here. He's got an, a braid, inverted iceberg, quicksand whirlpool. He's got a Tokatia's amulet from uh, from Brothers War. Five mana, four four. When it leaves the battlefield, you gain some life, and as on Earth. He's got Oak and Siren, and he's got uh, an interesting one, Surge of Salvation. I don't even know what that card is. It was a uh, white, I think it was from Bro, but it could have been from another set. It was like a color hate card. It was a uh, white, white mana instant. Your creatures gain uh, hexproof until end of turn and prevent all damage that would be dealt to them by black or red creatures. Let's see here. I think it's just sort of like a save, save a creature spell, kind of. All right, this paladin wasn't was it him that was playing this uh, last time, or somebody else playing this? I know somebody was playing this the other day, and I was commenting on how it was potentially looking scary, but it's already gone. <laughs> Jordan says, "I ain't dealing with that. I, I don't want to play against them. Four four life link trample. No, no. I believe it's uh, it's it, it gets life link and trample as long as you've put a counter on a creature this turn." I'm going to be honest, I've never seen that card a day in my life. 
I feel like um, right now, I don't know who you are, Paladin. So, 4 mana 4-4 four, four gets lifelink and trample as long as a, cre- a counter has been placed on a creature. And then you could pay, I think, 3 to grant trample and lifelink to any creature that has a plus 1 counter on it. It was a plus 1 counter uh, thing in that set. Uh, Crimson Vow, I'll say. It was not one of the better archetypes in that set. Let's see what Jack wants to do. He looks like he might get a little aggressive. He here. wants to attack. He says, "He says I know Jordan wants to attack me, so I, I better I better be able to attack him. So Jordan's going to let this trade happen. He doesn't really... He's not really going to have things to sack to the, uh, the Vanguard. Well, here comes the cat in the suit. The hand is just going to be saw blades and a cooped up. Does Jordan have something he's looking to ramp to here? Uh, no, he he had an abrade. He chose not to use it on any of the creatures. He's drawn another abrade. He's just going to play a 5 mana 4 4 here. So when it leaves the battlefield, you gain 2 life. You can unearth it. So, kind of a slow. You know, yeah, that's probably going to eat the cooped up. Kind of a, a, bi- a big old slow creature here, but. Uh, I guess Jack grabs his red. Makes yeah. sense to me. Does he have a hatcher yet? No, oh. we did draw the uh, Dead Maw, but probably just coop up the 4 4, get the swinging. You mean the Colossal Dreadmaw, right? The best card in Magic? Uh, the Earth Shaker Dreadmaw. Oh, nah, nah. <laughs> Clearly a downgrade. I had I had a Colossal Dreadmaw. We, we, we did a we did in-person Chaos Draft uh, on Friday, and uh, I had one of those uh, Colossal Dreadmaws. The, the, the good one, as, as we say. The old 6-6 six, six champion for 6? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so Jordan's leaving up his braid here. He's got the Surge of Salvation that he could use if uh, Jack tries to target his creature, but it's just an Oaken Siren. So uh, he's got also Brackish Blunder, the Bounce Spell in hand, but both of his blue got tapped. Oh, so I guess we're just going to see a Dread Maul here. Yeah, and uh, no, no answer to that at this time. So this is just six mana six. This is just a Colossal Dread Maul on this board, right? Pretty much, but I mean, Jordan has time. He can always brackish blunder it. He could bounce it. Yeah, he's not drawn any. He's drawn the the landmark here, the one mana artifact that you can turn into the flyer after. So subscribe to it for white. Yeah, so not not a high impact draw here. Facing down a six six, he may just blunder it next turn to make a map, and uh, eventually he'll, he'll he'll be able to make a six six. He can craft away his onulet, and he'll actually gain life uh, by doing it. He might actually just do that right now. The problem with that is... I, I mean, he will gain two life, so he's not dead to a removal. Yeah, so the Onulet gets crafted away. He gains two life, and he has a 6-6. Six, six. There you go. That's why Onulet's in the deck. I'm sure. <laughs> All right. I mean, his planes won't do it, but, I mean, he can just make the 6-6-8. Six, six, oh. That is blundered. Yeah, that's going to be rough. It's going to be a rough turn here with taking 8. But uh, he'll be able to reset it after. So he's drawn a Restless Reef, which I didn't see a black card. Uh, But I guess he has ways to activate it. Yeah, I mean, he might have, like, treasures in red, or he might have a Captivating in there. I trust his judgment. Yeah. (laughs) All right, so he's attacking, which uh, I think signals to Jack that something's up. He's got got an answer here. No, I might have actually just blocked up the two one and then spring leafed it. What's the sp- the spring loaded or what is it? Yeah, the spring loaded deals five. Oh, okay. Uh, you don't have to do it in response to the uh, the attack. You can wait until end step. Yep, yeah, of course. So, I guess you fire off the land here. Uh, with nothing else to do, I suppose, so. Yeah, can't really use the spring leaf now. All right, let's see how many patches go to the bottom. Uh, just one. <laughs> so uh, we got here, Cigars Imprisonment on the 6-6. Six, six. That's one way to do nope. it. Nope. This is a Surge of Salvation. You and Permanence you control gain Hexproof until end of turn. Wow. Yeah, so that also has text about your creatures won't take damage from black or red uh, sources this turn, but... Uh, all right, so uh, we're looking to stabilize here, and uh, so he can abrade this uh, 
this frog, which actually means Jack has to draw a forest in order to cast his 6-6. Six -six. So he's uh, astutely noticed that he does not have the mana required for that card. And he says, uh, well... The uh, one four flipped, right? Eh, no, well, he could just play this too. This works yeah, as well. So he, he, he just has lethal on board here. So Jordan, once again, uh, he, he's, able, he's always able to quickly turn the tide in these games where it looks like it's close or it looks like he's maybe a bit behind. You know, just within a couple turns, he just takes over. And I mean, just unfortunate for Jack that he doesn't even have the, the forest to replay his 6-6, six -six, and now he absolutely must deal with this uh, with this flyer on his draw step. And he's just keeping the, the cat on top for another counter to be able to get thrown around. All right, so Cloud Guard, uh, was that the draw for turn, or was, did he, was that's, he... That's a draw for turn, but that's still death. Yeah, it's still death because he could tap the flyer. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to Jordan. We see Jack, valiant effort, but uh, taking his 11th loss here. So but I'm sure we'll be seeing him back in contention next league. So congratulations to Jordan. And uh, we'll hopefully have some feature matches this Friday for week six. So hopefully stay tuned for that.